joke, so <laughs> I'll see something. I'll be doing the chat. Hello, everybody. So we need those like those robot chats where it's just like it like robotically speaks whatever someone typed out. <laughs> have you seen that? Like, have you ever watched those live streamers? Like, I think I think it's like like you pay five dollars or something, and it'll like repeat it for you or something like that. Yes, Tim the Tatman does that all the time. I love him. Oh my gosh, I've never seen that. And I'm a live stream junkie. How have I missed that? Hey, no, you ever watch badge. gamers on Twitch? <laughs> oh, okay. I know one person on Twitch. <laughs> hey, Ridge. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> You'd fit in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hi, Penny. Hi, Noah. I'm glad, I'm glad uh, Christy knows what she's doing here because I just showed up and turned my computer on. That's, <laughs> that's the extent of my knowledge here. Pretty much we're hanging out and uh, drinking. <laughs> so, no. Um, welcome to the Christmas live stream. We are just mostly here to hang out with you guys, chat about Christmas, and we have some Christmas stories that we've read. And if you read them along with us, that might be fun for you to stick around for the discussion later. And if you stick around to the very end, we might even have a game. We'll see how much time we have here. <laughs> so, um, this is for a very Russian Christmas. This is something that Una and Crypto put together. They're doing a very foreign Christmas on their channel. And we're starting with Russia, which I am very happy and excited about. Um, do you guys want to introduce your channel, channel Una and Crypto? Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm Una and, and that's Crypto. But can I tickle him? If I, if I, will my finger just go, that would be interesting oh. if I could. <laughs> that's not appropriate. Keep it PG. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. So, so we're usually on the channel, the Codex Cantina, but we love our, our, our lovely ladies this way. So now let's see if my fingers, Nope. Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> no, it worked on my screen. It worked on mine. All right, and last but not okay. least. <laughs> that would I be lost my thingy. Sorry, I lost my thingy. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, see, I've already screwed up. What up, nerds? It's Leslie from the Nerdy Narratives. How are you tonight? Got my hat on. I am not singing. Any Christmas carols, so if you came for that, I'm sorry to disappoint. I tried to find some Russian ones, and I immediately noped right out of that idea. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, like, now, Christy got us here because she actually promised us that you would be doing Christmas carols today and singing for us. <laughs> um, Pudgy's Christmas? <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Leslie, you didn't tell us all the genres you now read on your channel. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, see, I, I get caught because I list them all. And then I'm like, you know, I shouldn't list them all. I just be like, I like to read everything. And then people are like, but I like for you to list them all. So I like to read science fiction, fantasy, manga, horror, and even a little bit of nonfiction. And maybe <laughs> some classics. Yep. At what point? At what point does the list become like more efficient just to be exclusion? Like I don't read this. Like you know those uh, people. It's like what music do you listen to? I listen to everything except like country. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, I, as you all know, love the channels of both the Codex Cantina and Leslie. They are two of my favorite channels on BookTube. So I highly recommend Aww. checking them out. As if you're here without knowing them, I'm sure everybody here already knows you guys but um yeah they're both of their channels are linked down below there's some an analysis videos on the stories that we will be talking about also linked down below from the codex cantina and leslie's been doing wrap-ups and and talking about the stories in her wrap-ups as well so and i just did a vlog so we're very excited about these russian stories um let us know in the chat um, if you guys have channels, and also if you have any favorite Christmas stories, um, we just wanted to chat a little bit to start off here about kind of what Christmas means for us and what we tend to do around the holiday season. Are we going to do the... <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you, got, you got to kick it off. You got to figure out how to point to one of us. Yeah. Does... It'll, it'll be like tag. Let's start with you, Una. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, obviously, this year is going to be a yes. little bit different, cool. I think, for most people. We, my, my, um, my mom has eight brothers and sisters just on her side. So it's a pretty big family. Um, but we usually all get together. We open presents in the morning, and then on Christmas Day, we all head over to, to their house. And it's each, each kid had about another three or four kids, so it's pretty insane Christmas Day. <laughs> but this year, just, just us. All right, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, I don't have a huge family uh, like that really anymore. So um, my wife has a very large family, uh, three sisters and lots of kids and grandparents and cousins and huge, huge family. Uh, my family's kind of spread out. Most of her is still uh, here in Florida. And we normally go there, but... Uh, her parents got the COVID, so they're quarantined. And mm. uh, so we will not be going there. Um, so I probably will go to North Carolina maybe to see my sister. And then uh, she's going to go to her aunt's house, um, who we've had regular contact with. So uh, we feel like that's safer for, for her. So uh, we, we keep it a low key this year as well. You got a point. Yep. Let's see. We are going. Hey, watch where you're sticking that finger. We're going back home. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We will be going home to Mississippi for the holidays. We always spend Christmas Eve with Chris's family, who he has a pretty big family. And then our families live very close to one another. So we'll be getting up the next morning and hanging out with my family and all of my brothers and just doing, we just like to get together and visit. And really we like to eat. It's my favorite <laughs> thing. Even when yeah. I lived in Mississippi, I would start starving my family for attention. Like I wouldn't go see them like about September on. So then they'd be like, <laughs> what do you want us to cook? Just so you'll come see us. And I'm like, well, here's a list of my favorites. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you guys have like family specialties? Like for example, like when we go to, you know, my cousin's house, my grandma brings a cheese ball, like that's her jam. And it's gotten so popular. Now she has to bring two cheese balls. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I don't know about you guys, but for Christmas, we don't eat, we don't eat lunch at all. Like just forget about it. You just have all of these like little appetizers and snacks that we just kind of munch on all day. And then like dinners, like the main course basically. And, and wine. Big one for us. That. You do the lunch? Yeah, we do big lunch. And then we just literally don't stop eating. Chris's dad is a huge cook. Like he's actually about to come out with his first cookbook. And he just makes like there'll just be a whole counter full of pies, like every pie. And like he makes pies. everything from scratch. Like he makes the little crusts and all the insides like oh, so good. Chess pie, chocolate pie, lemon pie, key lime, cheesecake that's still warm. What about pecan? Yeah, you got the pecan favorite. Pie? Yes, I don't like pecan, so I don't care that he makes pecan, oh, but there is pecan and sweet potato. Sweet potato, oh yeah. That's so hateful. It's Christmas, you shouldn't say things like that. <laughs> you shouldn't say you don't like pecan pie, it's the best pie ever. <laughs> Gross, you can have it. I love yeah, pecan I pie. I, I actually, when I went to New Orleans, I want to say four four years ago, you know I remember Louisiana, I- Louisiana, right? Not Mississippi? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did I say it? What did I say? Close enough, though. You said- I said New Orleans. You said New Orleans, but I just make sure- New Orleans. New Orleans. New Well, I, I, you, you were, you were kind of like making like a comment on Leslie's accent there. When we said pecan pie, I, I was like, hey, accent. what- you were hoping for her to say pecan. Well, yeah, that, that, that was the thing. Is, well, in in New Orleans, okay, I was like, "What's what's the beer of choice here?" And they're like, "We got pecan," and I'm like, "Pecan." <laughs> and my wife is so embarrassed. She's like, "Honey, pecan." And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "It was like the first place we stopped that too." So, dang Northerners. Oh man, <laughs> us Yankees, we don't get it. <laughs> My wife. My became, dad's. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, just for the food thing, real quick. My wife became notorious for the um, uh, 
she does she does loves baking breads and uh she made a homemade bread that she filled with the uh the the dip um what's the like the the, the one with the spinach the spinach dip spinach dip spinach yeah, yeah dip, so it's yeah. a homemade bread with the spinach dip inside and like onion straws fried on top of it with bacon Ooh. and then you just like tear it apart and eat it and i think it's disgusting mm. cuz i don't like spinach or onions but Everybody else loved well, it. So she had to start making like two of them because everybody would love those things so much. I thought you were going to go a different direction. I thought you were going to be like, well, it's in bread, which is like the most disgusting thing ever. So I don't eat it. Yeah. 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 Oh, I don't eat bread. Oh, that's right. You yeah, don't eat bread since you're like he a hasn't had. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's going bread. on. He's, he's approaching. He's approaching three decades <laughs> of no bread. Yeah. That's, that's right. I'm going to live to be a hundred. Okay. We'll see. I'll race you. I love bread. I'll eat anything bread. <laughs> the pasta I'll make bread a bowl meal out of bread, you, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, there's the, need more bread. <laughs> there's there's that Jim Gaffigan joke. He's like, "You want some bread with that bread? Oh, yeah. You want to wash it down with fried bread?" And I'm like, "Yeah, this guy knows What's what he's bread? talking I about." That was bacon. <laughs> I thought he made all those jokes about bacon. Well, he's got the bacon one too. Where oh, he's talking about like too. when you make bacon, it even sounds like applause. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my dad's from Indiana, and he was stationed at Columbus Air Force Base when he signed up, and he met my mom. So I'm actually a traitor because we got the North and the South, and they made a baby. So I'm both. But I still say pecan. That sounds like a nice Christmas story, unlike the ones we read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one has yeah, a happy well, ending. Well, see, well, Christy, do you have any pets? No pets, sadly. Yeah. Okay. So, so the bottom row here is no, is no, is no, no puppies, and in the, the top two, you guys both have multiple puppies. When you guys were <laughs> no, done reading, the right way when to you be. were, when you were done reading these stories, did you just snuggle them so hard? Like that was so sad. I need this right now. And just there's never not any snuggling in this house. <laughs> oh. Snuggles going on. I'm not a. I'm not a. I not in touch with my I, feelings. So. <laughs> I hear the way you, I hear how you talk to your dogs. You, you do not like your dogs. I feel like they annoy me. I love them, but they annoy me. That's how you probably feel about your, your child, right? I love him, but he annoys me. No, he's the best. <laughs> it's the best annoying though. I'll say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> the first story I thought was hilarious. The other two the, were like, which, how in the world is that? Which is the first story. I'm sorry. The first one was the first the one New was tree. Oh, okay. Okay. The okay. Mikhail Zoschenko. Okay, the New Year's tree. Yeah. yeah, it was cute because it had little kids fighting, just like any family you could picture. Typical. Just yeah, little kids waking up, I want this toy, I want that toy, doing things for them. Um and, but then but there's that one Russian line where the dad's <laughs> just like, You guys need to learn to share or you'll grow up and die alone. <laughs> <laughs> That oh, was a man. really good intro story. I feel like if anyone here does want to go read some Russian Christmas story, go read that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I read that yeah. one. And I'm like, man, this is going to be great. And then it was like, yeah, it gets real dark after that. I'm like, oh, well, okay. we got we got Dostoevsky in space over here. The the Dostoevsky stories are brutal. Yeah, <laughs> <Kikiva, laughs> they Kikiva are. Tolstoy was dark. Just like, wait. Like 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 like. <laughs> I think Dostoevsky like like takes the Tolstoy story. It was like, oh wait, hang on, there's a little bit more darkness in there. Let me pull that out for you, and that's what his <laughs> what? story is. You want, you want dead children? I can deliver that. I got you. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, don't spoil no it much for Leslie. Warm and fuzzy. No warm and fuzzy. No warm and fuzzy. Get rid of that idea. What do Throw you guys expect when you pick up when you think Christmas stories? What do you guys typically expect to to hear from to find when you read it well i'll say I'll, but yeah I'll, let me start I, I actually don't have a ton of christmas story experience like i i've watched a ton of the movies right so like uh my parents love what is it uh christmas with and my, and my wife they love christmas with the cranks right with with tim allen um well that's based on i think a john grisham novel skipping christmas i believe so i i just haven't read a ton of christmas stories so i read that and like I got done and I'm like, you know what? 
movie did it better. Like I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just really like the Christmas movies. It's hard for me to read the stories. So when the idea came about to do try, you know, different cultures for Christmas, I was excited. And when we, when we picked Russia, I was like, this is probably going to be sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it should gonna... have made sense. Like it's the opposite. I should have understood it was going to be completely opposite of merry and bright Christmas happy endings. Yeah. I'm but surprised no. I actually, I don't own a puppy now. Like that's the only surprising thing coming out of these Russian stories is that I don't have a new you dog running get around. A puppy for Christmas. <laughs> Maybe I will. You never know. Well, what, but what would I call him though? Well, we have to see him and then we can name him. Well, no, well hang on. if you could pick, okay, of, of the stories that you've read, you got to pick one character name that you're going to name your new puppy after, or you can, you, I'll say we'll include author names too. If you want, you got to name your puppy, one of these Russian names. What are you going to call him? Teffy. Oh, one of the Russian Teffy. names. <laughs> oh, Teffy is a good name. That's a great name for a dog. Teffy. Rich has a cat with a Russian name. I think. Leo. I forget what it is though. That's a Leo. Old name. Mm, mm. Good old Leo. Yeah. I think I think That's I would go with Minka. I think Minka's Minka. a cute puppy name. Yeah, it'd have to be a small Minka puppy. Minka's a though. cat name. Uh, Why do you nobody... say that with a with a scowl on your face, <laughs> just like cat? cat. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we know which one's the cat hater over here. I'm not a hater. I just learned. I had cats, <laughs> and now I have dogs. Because the cats died. <laughs> so you well, had to I place mean, them. They, they kind of did. But <laughs> dogs are better. You walk outside for two seconds and come back in. And the dog is like, oh my God, I haven't seen you in two seconds. The cat's like. Can you shut the door? <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are you looking at me for? I'm not going to yeah. welcome you home. You suck. Did you get any, did you get any catnip when you're out there? Because otherwise, go back out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what about what about what about you, Crypto? Do you read uh, any American stories, or what do you think of when you think of Christmas? I think it's the same thing. Uh, I think that like, are there a lot of American <laughs> Christmas stories that aren't movies? I feel like that that's the main exposure for our culture, which is very different. I mean, we're a much younger country. So we just, we haven't had, I think, a lot of time for a lot of authors to write a lot of Christmas stories that have become literary classics um, that like you and I read. So I think that, yeah, I, I was exposed to all the movies, Christmas Vacation, A Christmas Story, uh, Frosty the Snowman. I watched all those when I was a little kid. And that was kind of my expectation of Christmas and then Christmas songs. And then reading these, I realized, wow, our culture has a very different outlook of what we consider to be Christmas compared to other cultures, at least the American compared to the Russian thus far. So let, let me tag on an addendum to, to Christy's question there. What is your favorite Christmas story, movie or book? To that, so I'm gonna throw mine is a Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, we were actually discussing this in class today because I was playing Christmas carols uh, while we were doing a study guides for a test we have tomorrow, and uh, the kids were asking Christmas favorite Christmas song, favorite Christmas movie, and uh, I was like, oh, this is super easy. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. There's yes. So many, I mean, you you you, yes. you can quote every line in that movie is a quote. Um, Beep is full. Uh, you know, <laughs> I couldn't be more surprised. Eddie, if I woke up, my head so does the carpet. Where's Eddie? He Why eats is these the things. carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. <laughs> I don't know, Margo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Dad, do you remember the shovel? Uh, bend know. over and I'll show you. Yeah. I'm talking, to you. <laughs> talking to you. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Can't see the lines, can you, Russ? <laughs> I, I could do the whole movie. My sister and I could do the whole movie. I, just, I absolutely love that movie. So, All right, so yeah. fun fact. This is, uh, this is real quick. I am dedicating tonight to us in this live chat. I was invited, my friend rented out a movie theater and they're showing Christmas vacation tonight, but this was more important to me to be wow. here with you guys. Instead. Thank you, Una, for your wow. sacrifice. suck up. <laughs> I'm gonna tell your friend, ha ha. No, actually, I didn't tell him on the live stream. He'd probably be mad, but. <laughs> I'm gonna tweet this out. Maybe he'll see it. I know we have some people here who are doing the reindeer games 
readathon, clearly. And guess Get who right is on. team captain for Clark Griswold? Oh, that's, right. that's Leslie. Yep. So, so I've here's already the watched it twice this year. So is that is that going to be your pick for favorite Christmas movie then? Oh, yeah. That's 100% my favorite Christmas movie. It is always the first one I watch every year. As I was decorating the tree, had it on, watched again the other day. I love that movie. I love that song. It's my favorite. My sister right, broke what my about... heart when she replaced hers because that was her favorite movie, but she loves Elf more now. No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think that happened with my parents too. They broke used to be heart. kind of more. They used to be more about the classics, like the Wonderful Life. And mm. then Elf came out, and they just fell in love with that. I don't know. They're hipper than I am, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it's probably <laughs> Elf would be my second favorite, sure. But he's an angry Elf. Ever. <laughs> hey, that's Tyrion Lannister. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go into the bathroom around him. <laughs> no. Oh man. You gotta be careful where you shoot it. <laughs> All right, Christy. What's what's your favorite Christmas movie? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't know. I really. That's why you asked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that was the addendum to it. <laughs> that was the addendum. Gosh, um, I honestly, I don't. Uh, I feel kind of weird, but I don't normally get into the Christmas spirit super much. My favorite <gasps> Christmas stories are the Gospels. <laughs> I know. Well, okay, that movies. That's that's kind of super OG right there. If you say the gospel. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's what I'm no, into. Christmas spirit. All right. We need to Sorry. sing loud. We need to get that Christmas cheer going. I like the old ones. Do I need yeah. to play my intro for you? Are Gosh. you are you guys are you guys a couple that that doesn't do TV very often? You're more of like a do other activities. Uh, we play video games. <laughs> we don't watch okay. a ton of TV. We do like Home Alone. Yes, thank you, Noah. You're saving the day. Home Alone is definitely a Christmas. Kev likes Christmas movies for sure. He loves uh, Die the Hard. Griswolds. He loves Die Hard. Yes. <laughs> Die Hard Die straight Hard. up. Die Hard is number two fighting. for me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Christmas Vacation and then Die Hard. Oh, yes. Scrooge! Um, have you have you seen Scrooge with Bill Duck with oh, with, with Bill the Murray. D with that's Bill Murray? Yeah. 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 Yes. That's, Ooh, that's a good one. Is that yeah, good that one? Was a good one too. Always watch that, that is one. a fantastic one. Yeah, yeah I when think he goes I, crazy at the end with uh, what's the, the the comedian that had the screechy voice? Oh, I'm gonna man. kill you. Is that Bob Bobcat? Bobcat, yeah. That yeah. part's so funny. Yeah. So, for you guys up here, which of the Russian Christmas stories have you read so far that are on our schedule? Are you asking when you say up here? Uh, like, let's start wait. with you, Una. Oh, we're going, okay. I didn't know if you were asking. Like, <laughs> I will <laughs> ask everybody, but. Uh, for, for our schedule, I've read all of them. You've read all of them? Okay. Yeah, nice. I've read all of them. You can't, you can't spoil me. Did we read them in October? Huh? Didn't we well, no, in we, we, October? No, no, we waited till November. It was early November, <laughs> like November 2nd. You're. Oh my God, do not read any more. Stop reading them. Stop reading them. You're going to hate me for making Una's going to be the next Santa. <laughs> we, got, we, got a, we got a schedule here. We got to, we got to hit the schedule. Yeah, I've, I've read. I, I think I even read some of them before he did, believe it or not. Oh, wow. He, wow. he okay, so be between the two of us, he probably reads, no exaggeration, probably three times faster than I do. Like, it'll take me. Whoa. It, it, it takes me probably at least like, three weeks to read a book it'll be like the night before we record and he'll be like should i get started <laughs> <laughs> i'm not that bad two nights before <laughs> two, yeah, nights but before. No, he, two nights before he'll start reading it <laughs> all right leslie i have only read the three that you've covered i literally look at your schedule and i'm like okay what day is what going up and then i just put it on my calendar i'm like okay and i read it that morning so that way it's fresh on my mind and I'm ready for the analysis and discussion at noon. What's up next? Is it is it Dostoevsky? Uh, I think not Dostoevsky. Today. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because it's the, one, it's, it's, the one, it's the one we recorded with you, which was uh, 
the 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 boy yeah, at the beggar the boy at Christ's yeah. Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah. make sure next. both your make sure both your puppies are near for that one. You're gonna want to hug yeah. after that one. You're gonna want some tissues. <laughs> yeah, be ready to ready to be popping sure. your favorite Christmas movie chat. Yeah, Reading that one. You'll need it. <laughs> are there any you're looking forward to, Leslie? I actually haven't read far enough ahead to be able to pick. Okay. Now, now with with that said, um, Leslie, have you read like is this your first exposure like as a whole to like Russian London? Maybe you've read some other stuff oh, yeah. before, but oh, but this, totally brand spanking new. And how and how has that been? Kind of like as someone who's never experienced it before. I mean, it's kind of weird. Not only did you enter into like Russian literature, but like specifically Russian Christmas stories. Like, how has that been for you? Well, so the first one, the New Year's tree felt normal. Like that didn't seem really any different to me. When I read the second one, which was at Christmas Tide, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Check off. That one totally surprised me. I was, I mean, it was so dark. And I'm thinking, how is this a Christmas story? So then I kind of read up a little bit about how russians viewed christmas and that it's really they see it as a religious holiday they don't really have much to do with it they're big into new years and so then i thought okay so it's not they don't put the same amount of joy for christmas as americans do and so then i just kind of had to change my way of thinking and i thought i was prepared for the third one we read, which was something like Dream of a Young Czar. The Young Czar. And I, yeah. And I thought I was prepared. I'm like, okay, this is this is how it's going to be. This, this is going to be the theme for these stories. And I still was not prepared for how deep it was and how dark it was. And I just felt some kind of way. It's, it, just, it just really kind of affects you and makes you think what these people deal with at the time of year when we are at our happiest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely been eye opening. Yeah. I wonder how much of that is, is also just the, it's a big country. So you can't, you can't generalize the whole thing, but there's a lot, there's a lot of parts of the country that particularly in the older time, there used to be a lot more snow. There used to be a lot more isolation at that time of year. You know, we hop in our SUVs, go drive in, two foot snow because a snow plow came out and well i do you you down in yeah. the south don't do that right but crypto but, and but, i don't have to worry about that yeah, you, you guys are probably up there like what's he talking about yeah. us that live snow? up here in the north right uh grew up in chicago but you know you you got to where you needed to go but when you have those huge blizzards and horses driving around and, and bigger distance between towns it's probably a lot more isolation to the feelings and such at the time too boop boop So, ugh. I've said so, Leslie. We got to go back. You never answered the question. What's the <laughs> one food? What's the one food you look forward to when you go to your family's house? You did. You never. You, you dodged it. You dodged it. <sighs> fried turkey. My oh, dad yeah. makes the best fried turkey, and he has to make two because he and I are going to eat the first one when we carve it. So we have mm -hmm. to make another one for the rest yeah. of the family. Yeah, it's it's like when um my wife my wife got a fryer and she learned how to make like homemade potato chips. You get, you make twice as much because oh you put one goodness. aside and then you taste test the next one and then you put one aside and then you that's that's you and turkey at that point, right? Oh man, I love turkey so much. Fry we um we 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 did a new recipe this year for turkey that turned out so good. We're going to do an even bigger turkey at Christmas time this year. So. For Thanksgiving, we, we we salted the inside, salted the outside, no brining, and it just locked all the juices in there. The turkey was amazing. We're gonna do the same thing, but a bigger turkey this year for Christmas. So I'm like mm. super excited for, for Christmas now. <laughs> I asked my son, um, what's what do you what are you most looking forward to for Christmas? And he of course said presents, right? Like oh well, yeah. Shocking, right? And I asked my wife and I said, Honey, aren't you more excited to hang out with your family and spend time together? She's like, yes. And what about you, honey? I'm like, I'm looking forward to the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah, well, yeah. 
Alrighty, guys. Not- you had to marry <laughs> once It's game time. It's game time. Another. I've been thinking about this all day. <laughs> I, I'm cheating. Just I'm so cheating you know. Too. Cheating hard. Just, just so you know. Okay. Cheating so, a bit. okay. So, At your own uh, question, this was Una's question, guys. I should yeah, say that. That you, you so uh, what was it? Uh, Leslie just did. Uh, well, I should point this way. Leslie just did a tag that. Um, what's it called? Among Us game. Yeah. Where she described it that there's like these. You're you're on a team, right? You're trying to accomplish something, but there's what I call like a traitor. What, what's the game call it? Uh, it's you talking about imposter. Imposter, right? One one that's trying to work against the team, right? To sabotage. So that's me, right? I'm like, hey, here's a great question, but then when we get live, I cheat, right? So I'm going to I'm typical. going to include, yeah, typical. I'm going to include all <laughs> all of the writers in 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 the schedule for my list here. Okay, that's definitely cheating. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it, right? <laughs> so so Mary kiss kill. <laughs> So if we had to marry one writer, kiss one writer, or drop one off at the gulag, what would be the three? So I, I've been thinking about this hard. And you know what I did? This is this might be a little bit too much. I pulled up pictures of the writers too, because if I got if I gotta marry them. Wow. You know, I got to You are very you know, vain. I, I am. I, I well, I gotta stare at the I'm looking at this this Shekhoff picture and I'm like, that dude, I don't I I like his writing, but he looks like a mouth breather. Like I, I can just picture like <laughs> <laughs> like it's just oh, not going to work out with us. So I'm going to marry Tolstoy. Okay, all right. I know it's a bad idea. I've read the biography. It's a bad idea, but that's what I'm going with. <laughs> I'm actually I'm going to date Nikolai Gogol. Okay, because because crypto knows if you can make me laugh, I'm your friend, right? Like that's just how it works. Uh, Gulag. See, these were all good writers. And I could drop I could drop any of these off for different reasons. I was thinking Mikhail Zoshenko just because I liked all the other ones a lot, just personally. But I might, and this is gonna this is gonna this is where I'm sabotaging. Okay, here it comes. I'm gonna drop Dostoevsky off at the gulag. Oh, I'm waiting for Christ, Chris. I'm waiting for Christy's face. That? Yeah, I was expecting a face there. There's what? no face. I was reading the chat. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Based on these stories or like on everything? Cause... Well, I, I, I ultimately decided he was the gulag because when he comes out, he's going to be even a better writer, right? That's just mean. Is it, is it not fair, though, that if you've read his biography. After he went to prison, he was released. Okay, and he became an even better writer compared to his pre-prison stories. He has suffered enough. Well, it's funny because I drop him off too, so he was my favorite. Job. I'm sorry. All right, all right, crypto, your turn. Uh, so I have very, I have similar answers, but just different reasons of why I chose. So okay. I did, uh, I did Mary Tolstoy because I think that he would be faithful. So I big. would, I would <laughs> date Chekhov because I think he'd be fun. I think he'd be fun. <laughs> He's got a, he has a pretty mouth. He's got a pretty <laughs> mouth. If I'm gonna go date for somebody, it's got to be the pretty one. Oh. Uh, next would be. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Dostoevsky, I'd throw to the gulag. I think he's tough enough. He's been to prison. He can You're survive it again. D to the G as well? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's two Ds in the G. Okay. You guys yeah. are so okay. mean. Then, uh, I added on another one. I said, if I had to replace Una as my best friend, it'd be Gogol. Oh. Oh. That's, that's reasonable. That's completely reasonable. <laughs> so I had a fourth one. I was like, he's like, yeah. I was like. I just want to hang out with Gogol. Y'all like I just want to be everything. a friend. Like I want to go have s- shots of vodka and hang out. I would so drink with him. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, Gogol would be a little be... drunk and imagine the stories he'll tell you. Yeah. You're like and he's the dude where everyone afterwards like when Gogol leaves, we're all talking about Gogol and we're just yeah. like can you believe that he guy's did so that? funny. I can't believe he said that. Where does his mind go with these things? I mean, he that's probably how he wrote all the stories. He's like sitting at a bar, drunk, and he looks over and he's like, that dude has a nice overcoat. Yeah, yeah. Or that dude's got a big schnoz. I wish <laughs> I could, I wish I, I could come back from life and haunt that dude. Like that's 
<laughs> that's what Gogo would be thinking at that point in time. All right. Yes. Okay. So, 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 Leslie. Well, are we gonna go I three for three. Only, three for three. Yeah, I only chose out of the three authors we've read because that was my understanding, and I'm <laughs> not a cheater like you two. So I picked Zosenko, Zosenko, Mikhail Zosenko, Mary, and then I would date Chekhov, and then I would totally drop Tolstoy. He's scary. <laughs> He's scary. scary. <laughs> yeah. He's scary. Well, he Why is because he, he took he, he took Christmas Carol and is just like, yo, we're gonna throw in every trigger warning I can think of on these people, and then not like have any resolution at the end. Like that's pretty dark. Yeah. Mm -mm. Now, I mean, that could change as I meander through the rest of them, but for now, that's what I got. So, Christy, are you marrying dating? Dostoevsky in the gulag? So I figured you're picking him for all three. <laughs> you're picking him for all three, right? I, he, he is my everything. I, I mean, no. I, I think I'm going to go with Mary Dostoevsky, of course, because of, of course. course. I just, Duh. I don't know what's Shock wrong with there. you people, oh, but oh, I recognize the genius. We works. have good taste. <laughs> yeah, no, so well. he is a genius, but when he comes back from the gulag, he would be. He's going to be better. You're limiting him. You're putting yeah, him in a box. In, yeah, stop. You need, you need to let him He's go. He's good enough. <laughs> You're chaining him down. By he doesn't her. need to be any better. He's already let, always be let better. Him be. Yeah, let him be. Come on. Be best. <laughs> Gosh. I think Tolstoy would have enjoyed being in the gulag because he was such a, like, he, he like, enjoyed be like, You can work with your himself. hands every day. Woo! Exactly. I mean, he didn't like being rich anyway, so we'll just send him to the gulag. And no, like, Pushkin would want to be in the gulag. Yeah, you okay. need him on the list. Yeah, yeah. Oh Tell him to write a Christmas story. Did he? I don't yeah. even know if he wrote one. I don't I have to look that up. I think we that. looked for one, and we couldn't schedule find addendum. One. <laughs> nope, that'll make. Wait, wait, did, wait who is who is your who is your kiss? Or are you just not going to cheat on those things? That would be Gogol. I love I love Gogol. As well, so uh, based on like oh, no, we all one want story. to do side piece. There's enough to go. Yeah, around, sure. Yeah, no, nobody <laughs> wants to commit to Gogo, but everyone's like, "Hey, what are you, what are you doing Saturday night?" Right? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Christy. Hey, Andy. It came, it came from a place of love, just so you know. It was. I it don't was believe him. you. No, I'm, I'm putting him on this. We just didn't want to take your man. Lies. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, we left him for you. Yes. Oh my god. Okay, well that's true. He can only marry one of us, so that's cool. Right. Right. We can't we couldn't do that to you, right? We we <sighs> wanted to set him free. So you guys are real friends by sending my husband to the gulag. Thanks. Thanks for that. Just hey Andy, it's better. nice to see you. <laughs> can what? you guys see the can you guys can you guys see the chat or is it just Christy? You to have to chat? open it in another tab to see the chat. Oh, oh that's mine's popping up at the bottom, but I have my screen turned to the side. It might show you. Hmm. Like somebody just I said, think... Pushkin. Yeah, yes. like I got crypto detection. He's like, yeah, Pushkin. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Gogo fan. Gogo so is, is that day. a Mary yeah, Elizabeth? That's right. girl. Is that a Mary or a kiss, Elizabeth? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. She dodged it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, Andy Smith's dropping that knowledge. See, he's going to... Is Andy Smith going to play in the in the pronunciation game? Because it looks like I want him on my team. If that's, yeah, if that's it. yeah, I'm sure he would win. The other, he, was just, he was just talking on the World Hoppers Discord that he, he like, could sight-read ancient Greek or something when he was in divinity school, which is, like... Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> right, wow. right. So yeah, that's, that's impressive. Cool. If we're gonna do a language game, Andy is on my team. <laughs> no, 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 no. Pronunciation. Oh, I need all the help I can get. Andy, <laughs> my team. Faye has <laughs> also against the rest of y'all. <laughs> okay, I I will take Faye because Faye has also knows some languages. So Faye, what you're on my team. <laughs> Faye's got good taste. I see her supporting Dostoevsky. She's got good taste. I can yes. see. Yes, yes. She yes. Faye, Faye, and I we're tight. We 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 know what's right here. I'll and, take and, you for my team, Una. You've helped me out. <laughs> a lot. Oh, there we go. There we go. 
Is, does that mean um, Faye's going to join us on the uh, Brothers Karamazov this February, March read along? Oh, I hope she does. That would be so much fun. Ooh. I've been chatting. Faye is one of the people I've been chatting with on Voxer as we go through the stories. And she made a really good point about Chekhov. Let me see if I can. I wrote it down specifically so I could say it. She was like, it was so Vader. weird. It is not Vader. <laughs> She was like, it is so weird that this Chekhov story has some loose ends because, at least as far as we could figure out, we were talking about it. It was like, this Chekhov story, it doesn't have, it doesn't have everything explained because we know his endings are chopped. But at the same time, he puts things in there and it's like Chekhov's gun. You expect him to use whatever he puts in the story. So it's just weird. There was like Chekhov's guns that never went off in that story. Mm -hmm. Check out our video. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we, we did uh, the bet not long ago. And interesting fact, we learned that he actually wrote three parts. But literally, they just chopped the third part off. And it's been lost <laughs> didn't time. Publish it. Yeah. Yeah. And so nobody knows how it actually would have ended. So it's literally... so like, aggravating. Yeah. Well, it, so it, it, opens up, it opens it up to discussion. Um, I, I think it is interesting to ask the question of, you know, like, why would the characters act this way? Because if it was resolved and we knew more about why the husband was just being such a irresponsible, yeah, <laughs> it's a word I probably can't say on the live stream. Yeah. Um, we, we, we would have more finality to it as opposed to being able to kind of probably more And discuss. that's great. I like finality. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're gonna you're gonna like the next story. There's a lot of finality in the next story. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, there is. Every it's very short, but everything is covered very clearly <laughs> because he's it a is. genius. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll say this: of all of the stories, okay, I think the best written in terms of just how clean it is, uh, what it accomplishes, I think is the next story, the the Dostoevsky little boy at the the tree that's that in my opinion that's the cleanest most complete story of this lot i saw joe joe was here in the chat earlier i don't know if she's still here but her message her vox to me on this on the next story was like it it, it made me very happy she really really loved it so hopefully hopefully everybody is as wise and discerning as joe <laughs> no pressure you, yeah yeah <laughs> Well, and if you don't like him, we just send him to the gulag, and then he'll get even better. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, I, Dostoevsky ranking. So I don't think any of us here have read all of those. Mm -mm. No, we're doing the we're doing the idiot at the end of the year next year. So we're looking forward to that one. And you've done you've done notes. You said yes. It's very good, but it's hard. Yeah. It's like you have to do a lot of digging to understand what the heck is going on with notes. So I agree, Crime yeah. and Punishment is the most accessible. And Leslie just made my day by saying that she's <laughs> going to read it. <laughs> yes, I succumbed. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Christy. Merry Christmas. It's a great <laughs> present. Thank you. <laughs> Joe Smith is wise and discerning. She is very. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate your boxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was our next question? She's read all but notes. See, I don't know. I, I, I've i only read uh, Brothers K and Crime and Punishment. And I put top of the list is for me, Brothers Brothers K. Like that's that's my jam right there. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for that one. I kind of like it though. Like when characters are like, like, oh, you know, we're, we're being written. We're pros. This is enjoyable. And then it just dumps into the deep end of like a, a philosophical treaty. Like, I love that. Like, and that's what happens in this book. <laughs> I like that too. Super, super turn off for some people, but for me, I'm like, yeah, let's get into this. <laughs> okay. What about, let's see, what was the third, what story haven't we discussed yet? Oh, the Tolstoy one. Um, we talked about the Young Czar. Did we talk about the Young Czar? Briefly. I must have been reading the. I must have been reading the, the chat. Super dark one. Although yeah. I don't know, super it dark. may be that he had just come into his title. He had been working really hard oh. for five weeks, consecutive five weeks, and 
he had to do all of these things. And maybe those, maybe that dream with all those visions was just his brain catching up and processing all of the things he had been responsible for signing off on and making decisions mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Yeah. Joe had a really good, Joe had, I was gonna say, two, I had two really, all my, all the comments are great, but I had two that made me kind of reevaluate things. One, Joe said, I don't know how we came off in the video or if we came off too negative on the czar, but she's like, I would call him as naive. And I was like, naive mm -hmm. is the perfect word to have described that czar because mm -hmm. to, what, to what you're describing, I think he was realizing things and whether he drew his own conclusions or he didn't fully know, understand the ramifications of his decisions is, is very perfect for describing a naive czar. The other one, um, he's, he's a follow of ours. I don't know, this is me assuming, he, he speaks Russian, I know, because he helps us out and, and tells me some of the translations after we post the videos. We need him to, to come in before we post <laughs> them, right? But uh, he said he read the, the Tolstoy um, Russian Wikipedia article. And we said in our video that it came out in, in, in 1894, because that's what our book said. It just says date, 1894. Well, he, he clarified for me that in Russian, on his biography page, it says it was written in 1894 but it didn't come out until 1910, 1912. I know he had a bunch of post oh. posthumous stories that came out. So I think both of our thoughts were kind of along the lines of, he probably wrote it and was, even though he's the most powerful man in Russia in terms of not being in the government, he, he probably was still hesitant to release a letter that is so clearly written to the current czar, but he's like, yo, I don't want to go to the gulag, right? Like, <laughs> I, I, I ain't releasing that. So that's why, You'll also notice, remember, the, the book, there was only one story, which was the Tolstoy story, which had translator unknown. Mm -hmm. So not only did was he afraid to release it, the guy that translated it's like, yeah. I ain't put my name on this. <laughs> yeah, it's for sure. Like, that one go out that way. <laughs> so I, I thought that was kind of interesting. That is really interesting. I didn't realize that that's maybe why they there, there was no translator known. That's crazy. So that it's all theory, right? Like, but no, I mean, that's, if you a, read, that's a great theory. <laughs> it makes yeah, it exciting. You, you read about all these authors, like the Gogol and, and his boy Pushkin gets gets excommunicated and, and sent off for for writing "Ode to Liberty" and stuff like that. It's kind of like you got to be careful what you say in this country. Like, it's not freedom of speech. And Dostoevsky was thrown in the gulag just for like hanging around with some socialists. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even mm -hmm. actually a socialist. <laughs> He yeah. almost got killed for it. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I can understand. And um, the first author the of the first story, Zashenko, mm -hmm. he was writing under, um, what do they call that? Pen name. Uh, Pen name pseudonym. Um, where the government, you can't just post, you can't just publish whatever you want. It's um, under oh, the censored? Soviet Union. Yeah, censored. Thank you, censored. Joe was talking with me. The wise and discerning Joe. Um, so the, you wonder how that story would have been maybe different. Uh, I thought it was so satirical and, and I thought it was the most Christmassy of the first three, honestly, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. which is so ironic and great. Yeah. The other two did not say Christmas to me at all. <laughs> I know I, the Tolstoy one, especially, I was like, how is this even like, I mean, it's like Dickens essentially. It, it, yeah. The only real Christmassy thing about it was the callback to Dickens. Yeah. Well, well, that in thinking about others, and then for me, Christmas tide is about. I really think communication. If you go back and you look at like all of these Christmas movies, so many of them are longing for those people that they've lost touch with over time, the lost parents, the lost siblings. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's a huge thing at, at Christmas time. Um, so so you could say, okay, so they drop that this happens at Christmas, but I think the Christmas themes are there. Um, but to be fair, a lot of our Christmas stories, we've heard how many times, right? Like it's yeah. been beaten into our head. This is a Christmas story. This is our first exposure to these with a different flavor. Yes. I think that's the main takeaway that I learned is that the flavor of Russian Christmas is a different type of drink and uh, you need a shot of vodka to get through it. <laughs> yeah. You made a really good point, Crypto, about how our country hasn't been around like super long in order because we don't even have as many like we have some folk tales and stuff like that, but we don't have like the same kind of, I guess, tradition dating back 
in our stories. They're just different. They don't feel like they have the age. Yeah, we have the Salem Witch Trials and Ichabod yeah. Crane, right, Una? <laughs> oh, boy. <I> <laughs> <laughs> the stories we have kind of suck sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Luckily, we have some great modern writers, but it's still, it doesn't feel old and classic y. <laughs> Well, that would be a great question. Who's a, oh. what do you define as a great modern writer? Yeah. Mm. Flannery well, O'Connor. <laughs> is she modern, well, that, though? I don't even know. Well, it's not within 100 years. So I don't know. Barely 100 years. <laughs> what, I, what I would add to that last comment, too, is that even just culturally, if you go to European cities, it, there, there's stuff that's been around for hundreds, hundreds of years. And when it starts to get damaged, I mean, you can't go through Europe without seeing scaffolds everywhere where they're restoring constantly old buildings and, and refacing it. What do we do here? We rip it down and replace it with something new every single time. So even, even the fact that we are new, we are constantly becoming new were because we constantly try to throw away stuff and come up with new things constantly. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah you like have to Christmas restore Christmas story theme right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let all things be made new. <laughs> I want new presents. Oh, All man. right, are we, what? Are we going to play the, the pronunciation game? Yeah, so I was trying to copy and paste it so that I could put it up in a banner right here, but I can't copy paste the Russian characters. So, oh, is it, yeah, but we so can it probably still. Won't, probably, so it won't, have, won't work then, or no? Can we still play crypto? Do you know how to, can you pronounce it for us and everything. No, <laughs> not happening, Turbo. Oh, you can't say them either. No. Fantastic. Okay. No. Uh, well, I don't, no. I don't know just, about you guys. Just read them off to us, Crypto. Let us hear them. Go ahead. N -n -n no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say the that. College trust. Like, like, even pronunciations have different challenges, right? Like, I feel like when I look at a word, I generally know how it's supposed to sound. Um, but sometimes... I just can't, I'm, I'm like not even close. Like, like I hear it in my head, but then when I try and say it, it's just like, what the heck was that? That's not what I was trying yeah, to say. <laughs> I can say it perfectly inside my head. My mouth just doesn't work it out. It, just, right. it doesn't behave. And, and I don't know what happens with him, but there's something different with on his side where he'll say something and it won't even be correct at all, but he doesn't, he doesn't recognize it. Like, like, <laughs> like there's, there's something different about how everyone is, is failing at how to pronounce it. Like I fail to pronounce it. And I'm like, Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> no, I have I the, I don't know, the language certain I, letters together. Yeah. I, I have a disconnect and uh, I don't know. It, it's one of the things I struggle with tremendously is enunciation, especially like names. There's some, there's just one little poor Indian girl name. I say her name literally wrong every single day. <laughs> And uh, she just told me to give her a nickname, which I feel awful. Like I'm a terrible person, yeah. but I, I can't get it. I don't know something between my brain and my mouth. It doesn't work. Well, but one thing that you're better at is a lot of times I, I like I'll, I'll choose the wrong pronunciation for something like uh, WB Dubois first Dubois, right? We'll be, we'll be doing one of his stories and I'll just say Dubois and you're like, Hey, hey, hey slow down. You, you said Dubois there. And I don't, and I don't, make that connection but that's something that you don't ever make a mistake on i've noticed well, i i think i can recognize it but i can't do it myself it's like yeah. i'm a terrible and, writer but i'm a great grader at writing <laughs> well and, and that's what i'm saying is i think i'm the opposite where i'm not great at saying things like I, i'm when i work on it i get better at it but i can't hear it the way that you do like we, we have different yeah we have that's different the guy things. who can say japanese words no problem at all yeah. Yeah, what did I text you the other day? Hadiki Tojo. Ah, I got it. Right? You're very close. You're close. Oh, dang it. <laughs> you're, 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 getting, you're getting better at it. We're doing World War II, so. <laughs> yeah, okay, we, we so a... I've never, sorry, hang on. I've never done screen share before, but I'm going to try it and see if it'll work. Oh, <laughs> Definitely should have tested this out, but let's just see. I don't have two monitors either, so that makes it a little difficult. <laughs> mm. I'm do a okay. What happens? Let's. Well, while you're doing see. this, I'll I'll tell a, a Christmas story. So, uh, when I was little, five or six, uh, my sister and I would always wake up my mother and uh, stepfather super early, and 
they got really tired of it. I think like most parents do and they don't drink coffee. So it wasn't like, you know, go, Hey, make, get me a cup of coffee, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, so they started coming up with this game to distract us for hours on end. And do you remember the nineties? Uh, well, I don't, I, you're younger Christy, but, um, uh, and I don't know how old you are, Leslie. But... I'm older than you. Oh, okay. But do you remember? <laughs> well, maybe anyone knows. Do you remember the Nickelodeon car, uh, uh, game show Finders Keepers? Do you remember that, Una? Yes. Mm-hmm. I remember Guts. No, uh, not Guts. Was... <laughs> Finder Keepers was the one that was a house, and they had to run through each room and find the clues. And when you found the clue, it would be like this dries your clothes and you would know to run to the, the laundry room and go to the dryer oh, okay. and then you pull out a clue and it would be like this uh, plays music and you would run to the radio and it'd be the next clue. And so my mom started doing that uh, to distract us. And it was, it was really cool. It was like, <laughs> it's, it's my favorite probably Christmas memory of the first time she did that uh, distracting us, you know, for, and it, it took us like an hour the first time, you know, cause I'm like seven, eight years old. My sister's four years old you know, she can't really read. So I'm having to read them and think them. And, and, uh, we did it all the way up till we were like in high school and it was, it was really cool. It it was a lot of fun. And then we started doing it for my niece this last year, very simple little clues because she just started learning to read. Uh, but it, it, it was a blast. So that, that's my fun Christmas memory. Oh, oh, I was gonna say, I think my parents did something similar with, with Easter where they leave, um, little paper hints and we'd have to go find them throughout the house. And at the end, like the third last hint or whatever would be our Easter basket with like the toys and the chocolates in it and stuff like that. My mom put our Easter basket in the oven one time on accident in the afternoon (laughs) and forgot that she had cooked a casserole, a breakfast casserole in the morning. And when we opened it up to get our baskets, it was all just liquid chocolate in the bottom of the oven. It was hilarious. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Probably not for you at the time, though. You're like, where's my chocolate? <laughs> I, I, I'm i not a big chocolate fan, so I kind of thought it was actually funny. And I was of like, wow, course that's hilarious. you're not. Do you eat anything that is not alcohol? Something. Does that count? I mean, I guess that counts. <laughs> I, 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 does does I, whiskey what? count? One time at a restaurant. My husband would say yes. One time at a restaurant, we were, we were ordering food, and uh, I was just like, hey, man, you, you want to try this pasta? And, like, the look of revulsion <laughs> on his face. <laughs> it was like he's never seen anything more disgusting in his life. Uh, like, <laughs> I will get the fries. I will get the fries, Leslie. I will get the fries and eat those, I promise. Actually, my uh, wife and I will get our own, and your husband and you will have to get your own because we will not share I'll he probably won't share with me. He's going to be like, no, <laughs> these are mine. We need three orders. <laughs> <laughs> I don't typically share food anyway. I like to eat my food. It's my food for a reason. Now, if someone tries to grab it, do you growl at them? Uh, they, <laughs> if you go for it, then you're going to have retribution will be delivered immediately. <laughs> my oh. hand works faster than my mouth. <laughs> I, I had a I had a cheat the other day. Uh, my mom makes the uh, chocolate hot chocolate bomb things where you put the the ball of chocolate and then you put the hot milk or water over it and it pops up with mm-hmm. marshmallows and it makes like delicious hot chocolate. I had one of those the other day and it was delicious. Did you feel guilty afterwards? I did. <laughs> did you go work out for an extra hour? Uh, <laughs> no, I still have my shoulder issue, so I, I can't. Oh no, uh, you're still healing. Still healing. Yep. Yep. About two more months, the doctor said. So, oh, yeah. So I felt double guilty because I can't work out. So I just have to be super strict on my diet. Walk an extra mile. There we go. I was running. (laughs) All right. Is there any last thoughts on the stories, guys, before we wrap it up? I want to say, like, if if you're going in to read any of these stories, go into it with an open mind. And we say this in a lot of our videos, and I think you did as well, ladies, that uh, you have to know that these are not the Christmas stories that you're used to. Uh, You know, Charlie Brown Christmas and Christmas Carol and those type of things. These are a different way of looking at a holiday with a different purpose, I think, where here we're talking about redemption and we're talking about, you know, 
communication and rekindling relationships and forgiveness is one of the huge things of those Hallmark style, you know, cheesy Christmas movies for an American culture. And this is nothing like that. And if you can get past that, I think you actually can enjoy these uh, for something that is unique and can really teach you uh, about another culture's view of how they appreciate a holiday different than we do. Is there a Tiffany considered a Christmas movie? Yes. Somebody said yes. <laughs> Chris weighs in. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. I can't hear you. Oh, she, has her, she got her headbuds uh, in. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Chris. <laughs> it was really cute because we love that movie. And I think on our, our very first trip that we took together as a couple, we went to New York. And he surprised me and made a reservation at the restaurant, got the table that they filmed at in the movie. And we got like that big chocolate drink and everything. Love Actually? Is that the movie you're talking about? No, serendipity. I know I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Oh, I'm gonna take your prize for that. <laughs> you may come back with a nub, nine fingers. <laughs> Call you nine finger Leslie from here on out. Hey Danny. Well, you made it just in time for us to say goodbye to you, Danny. <laughs> Wait, Thanks for Christy. coming though. Christy, do you have any wrap ups? Um, I just wanted to say, I thought they were all so different and I thought it was really interesting that they were all considered Christmas stories because they were, they were just so different. I, this is partly why I don't like, I, I'm not very familiar with Christmas stories in general, other than the gospels, because they're, they're usually very cheesy and happy and I'm more of a Dostoevsky kind of a person. <laughs> So, that you are. That you are. You should name your channel after after yeah, yourself. I love him that much. Yeah. So would so, you, say, you haven't seen would, a lot of Christmas movies, but would you say that you like these stories better than the traditional Christmas style that we have in our culture? That, I do. Like I've been making videos for the library, like book hauls of Christmas books, and like it was really easy to do like Christmas picture books, Christmas romances. And what was Ugh. the other one I did? Oh, Christmas, oh. Christmas Cozy Mysteries. And like, I was looking for other kinds of Christmas stories. We have like a program to search different kinds of stories. And there just wasn't much else out there. And yeah, none of those were really like, they just don't. Unique. Oh. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't really feel like anything unique or worth digging into. I wasn't sure I wanted to spend my time making that's videos I, about them much less why, reading them i don't understand all the time when my wife she loves watching those hallmark movies i'm like they're so cooker cu cookie cutter you know exactly Lashay. what's going to happen they're her guilty yeah. pleasure and that's fine i mean i have my guilty pleasure uh but uh well what is so it more. yeah i gotta know oh he's right <laughs> below me that's my guilty pleasure oh as usual <laughs> never mind <laughs> So I thought, anyways, just wrapping it up, I really enjoyed how different all three of these first stories were and the continu the next ones that I've read, the other two that I've read are, of course, the Dostoevsky ones. And I, even though I complained a lot about certain ones, like the Chekhov one, I still really enjoyed seeing, like what Crypto was saying, how different it was and unique to, I guess, European culture and Russian specifically. So I'm looking forward to doing this in future years because I want to know more about what other countries think about when they think about Christmas and, and what kinds of stories come out of that. Doing it next year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Una already has it scheduled. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it like three days ago. <laughs> yep. All done. I'm done for the year. I got everything scheduled the whole year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh interesting so okay I. i've only seen like one or two and they were both like romances so it was just like that's cool i don't really read or watch romances so it's just it was cool um you've read or i'm sure they are some things <laughs> yeah that's good though i like to hear from somebody who likes other things than me thank you pete <laughs> um Anyways, I think we had better wrap it up, let people get back to their IRL lives. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming, guys. This was really fun chatting with everybody. I'm glad people like 
agree with me and like Dostoevsky and Flannery <laughs> and stuff like that. So I think we have a good crowd here tonight to make well, if up they did, for they'd be fighting words, right? The panelists, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but all that aside, uh, thank you so much to Una and Crypto and Leslie for coming. I really, really enjoyed chatting with you guys and everybody in the comments. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for hosting. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Yeah, this was a Everybody. blast. Happy holidays. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.